All right, you guys, did you get your medium mystery box? If so, this is what's in it. If not, here's a sneak peek for you. So in the mystery box, we've got our new cream clays, but it's not just your regular colors. We have six metallic colors and we also have six glitter colors. So I'm gonna swatch them out so you can see what they all look like. And then I'm gonna show you a couple of quick, easy designs that you can do with both of them, okay? So let's start with our metallics. So you're gonna notice when you get these, we had some questions before, are they gonna be really full? Are they halfway full? The containers are pretty full, so you're gonna get a really good amount of them. And a little bit goes a long way. So these small containers, a lot of people think that it's not gonna be a lot of paint in there, but there's actually a lot in there. And like I said, a little bit goes a long way. So what's in there is gonna last you a good long time. Okay, let me go ahead and open these up. Now I've sampled a couple of these and you can see that they don't really settle out. So they are a thick, somebody described it as pudding kind of a texture, and that actually is really accurate. It's a very thick, but creamy kind of a, um, kind of a consistency, okay? So let's start with our metallics first. I'll show you those and then I'll show you the glitters. So the first one we've got here is called Snack Purse. Now this, I swear they named this after me because I always have snacks in my purse. Um, but this is Snack Purse, a really pretty coppery bronze, um, just a beautiful, almost cinnamony kind of a color. So you can see as I'm brushing through, I'm using just, I'm not really floating, I am brushing, but I'm not pressing my brush down. I'm not trying to like press that in, just kind of smoothing over the surface of it. Okay. And a thin layer is gonna cure better than a thicker layer. If you do get these too thick, they will, um, uh, they will, they can bubble a little bit. So make sure that you're applying two thin coats of your color rather than one thick coat of your color, okay? Next color we've got is Metallico. So this is a really pretty gold metallic. These first two colors, I really like them together. Um, just kind of that bronze and gold tones. And so for my design, I'm gonna show you how to work with them together. Okay, so just that really pretty gold. All right, our third color is called Nerdy Hot. I'm not sure who, how they pick these names, but really pretty metallic lavender. And again, these colors, you guys, I, these three especially, I'm really loving for the fall. Um, and thank goodness that's the season we're in right now. So they're gonna work really good for your fall fall designs and your Christmas designs. The bronze and the gold, those are gonna be great for your New Year's, um, those kind of designs. A lot of fun that you can do with these. So again, just blending that out. All right, our green one is called Crocodile Tears. Just gonna take a little scoop of that. And again, in the jars, you guys, you'll see that it's not gonna self-level in there. And also on the nails, it's not gonna self-level. So you're not gonna have to worry about the product running down the sides, um, moving, puddling, anything like that. It's really gonna stay where you put it. It's just kind of flowing right onto the nail and then it just sets. Okay, so our next one is called Flippity Flop. It's kind of a blue, um, to me when it's called Flippity Flop, it makes me think of being out at the pool, being out at the beach. Uh, just that really pretty blue, kind of watercolor, oceany color, really pretty blue. All right. And then our last color of the metallics is called Mouthy. This is a really gorgeous, kind of a, almost a hot pink. And I'm not sure why, but this really reminds me of like the 80s. <laughs> Just kind of one of those colors. All right, so those are your metallics. I'm gonna go ahead and freeze these in the light um, a 30 second cure is gonna be good to freeze them and then you can do another coat on the top of them. Otherwise, a full cure of 60 seconds is what you wanna do. All 
Okay, so I showed you guys the metallics. Now I'm gonna show you the glitters. So these are still really bold colors. Um, a lot of times if you get like a glitter gel polish, you have to do several coats of it just to get that really good glitter intensity with these one to two coats and it's gonna cover beautifully. So let's start with our first one is called Retro Ride. Grab a little bit of that. This one's got, it's, it's kind of a tricky color because it's, to me, it's a little bit of a red. It's a little bit of a copper. It almost has a little hint of a pink to it. It's just a really different color, but there, I feel like there's a lot of different things in it, but just a really pretty one. I actually really think this one's gonna go well for um, definitely for fall and then also for Christmas kind of colors, uh, Christmas designs, because it does have that little hint of red to it. So that's gonna be a really pretty one for Christmas. Next one is kind of a kind of a magenta-y, fuchsia-y, kind of a pink color. And again, you guys, with the glitters, I'm putting them on just a hair thicker than I was doing with the metallics, just to make sure that my glitter has good coverage. So I'm not using too much pressure on my brush, just a little bit to smooth it and get a nice even surface. Okay, so this one was Microwave Gourmet. So all of you Microwave Gourmet people, this one's for you, okay? Our next one, our purple is Amuse-Bouche. I can never say that right, Amuse-Bouche. And this one is just a beautiful, kind of a garnet color, um, just a really deep purple. All right, and you guys, as you're working with these, you'll kind of notice that there's almost a tint to the base gel that's in there. So it's not just the glitters, you're gonna actually have really good coverage because that little bit of a tint to the gel itself, okay? Next color is Body Slam. And again, this one, it's kind of a tricky color to describe because it looks a little bit on the gold side, but then almost just kind of a, kind of a peachy tint to it almost, a little bit maybe of pink, um, just kind of depends on how you're seeing it, how you're, how you're seeing it. Almost a champagne kind of a look, maybe a, a, like a pink champagne. I'm going to go with that. And then our next one is Nada Mucho. A little bit more on kind of that blue tones, almost a blue green, um, not quite a teal almost like a blue green gray even that's what you guys i love these colors because it's like they're not your typical reds blues and greens it's like there's just a little bit else something else to them to make them a little bit more special okay so the last color this is my favorite color i love the teal color it's got a little bit of the teal blue green it's just absolutely gorgeous and this one is called tackle So again, you can kind of see that little bit of blue, a little bit of green, teal kind of look. Again, very oceany, very, I don't know. Just, just a beautiful color. Okay, so again, these are our six glitter cream clays. I will get this into the light, set those into place. We'll get a second coat on these and show you the final look, and then I'll do uh, another design for you. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my design just on a, on a press-on nail. Um, depending on what you're doing your design on, you may need to use a coat of protein bond. If you're working over an acrylic or a hard gel nail, I would definitely use a coat of protein bond. Make sure that you get that good adhesion. Um, over, a, um, over a full coverage tip, you don't necessarily have to, but I always like to use that protein bond. I feel like it's gonna give you the best adhesion and just in case, you never know. So it's always best to add a coat of protein bond. All right, so we got our protein bond on there. So the first design I'm gonna do, I'm gonna work with just my copper and gold colors. So these are gonna be really pretty. I love them, like I was saying before, for the holidays, for New Year's, they're gonna be beautiful, okay? 
And with these colors, the metallics especially, I love how they blend together. So that's one thing that I love doing with the metallics. So I'm just gonna kind of take a little bit of my product and just kind of sweep it onto the nail. I'll wipe out my brush, get out my excess, and then I'll come back in with my gold. Now you can blend them together a little bit more if you like. If you like that a little bit more definition, go ahead and leave it. I'm gonna come in and just kind of blend through. These colors work great for doing ombres and those kind of designs. So really beautiful blends. So you can see as I'm starting to just kind of blend the colors together, kind of pull them together, you get kind of that um, kind of that third color that comes together when you blend your colors. So it's not a copper, it's not a gold, it's somewhere right in between. And again, just kind of brushing through, feathering through. Make sure to catch my edges. All right. So you guys, I told you it was a simple design, but it's a great, um, great for an accent nail, great for, you know, a background. If you want to do any other hand painted designs over the top, you can use your glitters, your spiner glitters. You can uh, do a glitter press into these. So that's something else that you can do as well. They do dry with a tacky surface. So you do have that tack to put your glitter presses into. And we'll freeze that in place for just a quick 30 seconds. Now the next two nails, I'm gonna show you um, kind of another combination. I'll do a combination with the blue and the green and then the pink and the purple. Now one of them, I'm just gonna do just like we did this one, but on the other one, I'm gonna use a little bit of our black. So we do have a black cream clay. It is not part of this kit, but it's part of the other one. So I'm gonna use this as a base. When you use a black as a base, it's gonna really make your colors pop out. So if you want a really bold design, start with your black. If you want a little bit softer design similar to this, skip the black, okay? Let's just go ahead and start with our blue and green. So this one, I'm just gonna kinda come through vertically. Okay, so on our silver, or on our copper and gold, that one we went kind of at a diagonal, just to show you, you know, kind of what they look like going from different directions. And then also how the different colors blend together. So your blue and your green, you're gonna get kind of that teal blend in between. All right, so it's almost just kind of a color wash. Let's add just a little more of blue. All right. So I think I've got that one where I like it. Maybe just a little bit more on the edge here. Now, if you feel like your color isn't dark enough, you can always add a second coat. Um, but if you like it just how it is, go ahead and leave it. Okay, so on our next one, let's go ahead and do a coat of our black. And then I will get these into the light and we'll set that base layer. So again, I'm just brushing on a thin coat. I don't necessarily need full coverage with the black. Just a thin coat is going to give us enough of a dark background um, so that our colors will really pop from the top. All right. I should cap my edges. Okay, we'll go ahead and put this into the light. I'm gonna give it again a quick 30 second freeze if you're working on the other hand, you can definitely do up to a full minute here. Okay, so our first layer is set. So on this one, again, I'm gonna go with the pink and purple this time. So now you can see with the black, I'm gonna get that really, really bold chrome look. Just kind of blend through. And if you like, you can definitely leave some of those black spaces showing. Totally up to you, whatever you want your design to look like. Now when you're blending colors, <clears throat> again, kind of like when we do talk about color theory, try to choose colors that are close together on the color wheel to get a, a good blend. 
if you want things to stand out, choose kind of opposite colors. So if I wanted something to really blend together, like the pink and the purple, the blue and the green, those all blend well together. Now, if I wanted to add something that maybe is gonna stand out, let's just go ahead and add a little bit of our gold, just for the heck of it, just to give it a little bit more of an accent. Okay, and just kind of break up those colors a little bit. So again, just another really pretty background color, background design. You can always put your mylars over the top. Um, if you want to do that, you can do your uh, you can do your glitters. You can use it as a background for hand painted designs and things like that. I'm going to go ahead and set that into the light. Now, to finish the nails, you can use any of our top coats to finish. Um, if you want the high shine but no tack, you can use the ultimate finish top coat. And that's what I'm going to use on these two nails. But then I'm also going to show you what the metallics look like with a matte finish. It's a really pretty kind of a look, uh, more of that brushed chrome kind of a look. So just to give you some options, just so you can see what you like and change things up a little bit. For our copper and gold, I'm going to use our Manicure Matte Top Coat, just so you can see another option. Okay, so for both of these, I'm going to cure them out fully for 60 seconds. So the Ultimate Finish Top Coat, we don't need to wipe the tacky surface off. There is no tacky surface with the Ultimate Finish, but with our Manicure Top Coat, I am going to use our Manicure Cleanser to remove that top coat, or to remove that tacky surface. So you'll be able to see the difference with the matte finish and then a high shine. So it just gives you a little bit more, a little bit more of a brushed chrome look rather than that really shiny chrome look. So hopefully you guys will give those a try. Let me go ahead and do another quick little design with our glitters. Now this is actually something what I've got similar to what I've got on my nails. So you guys always ask, what do I have on my nails? This is something that you can do with the, with the cream clays that's gonna look similar. So I'm actually gonna start with, again, one of our, one of the original cream clays. Um, this one is Business Joggers, and it's just a really nice, kind of a, kind of a neutral pink. Um, great color for using if you're doing French manicures, or just again, as kind of a background color. So I'm gonna start with a coat of this, maybe two coats, just kind of depending on how I'm feeling, but we'll start with one just to see, see how I'm feeling. All right, I'm gonna freeze that into place for a quick 30 seconds. So again, just a nice thin layer, I'm not using it too thick, but again, just enough to fill in any little shadows or streaks. Again, we'll set that in for a quick 30 seconds. So I'm just gonna pick just a couple of different colors. I think for my design, because it's my favorite, I'm gonna go with kind of the teal color. And I'm just gonna start just kind of randomly, almost dabbing the product on, but again, keeping it thin. Okay, so you don't want your product super thick. Let that product kind of smooth out and then we'll add a few other colors just to give it a little bit more dimension now if you want real dimension like you want to see you know one color on top of the other you can go ahead and cure this into place if you want your colors to kind of blend together go ahead and add the color on top of it at this point so this at this point it's going to start to kind of blend together kind of like our first designs did um, but if you want more definition between your colors, you can cure that first layer and then add your next color. All right. I'm just kind of guiding that product into place. So let's go ahead and add maybe just a little bit of that, kind of that rosy color. And blend that in a little bit. 
And again, I'm just kind of tapping through. I'm not brushing at this point because I want to keep my product a little bit more right in one area. So just kind of moving it right in that little area. Okay, I think I like my colors where they're at. I have just kind of a rough edge. I don't want that perfectly smooth edge. I want a little bit of flow to it, a little bit of movement to it. And again, we'll go ahead and get that cured for a quick 30 seconds. Now I'm gonna do an outline on this. Now, because we have the glitters on there, they do have a little bit of a, almost a grit to them. So if I were to do my outline at this point, it's not gonna be smooth. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna use our ultimate finish top coat. You can use any top coat if you want something that has a little bit more of that tacky surface. If you want your product to kind of flow a little bit more, you could use either the manicure top coat, you could use the manicure base coat, that works too, um, or even the stain resistant top coat is fine too. But I actually like having um, that smooth surface but no tack to it. I feel like I get a little bit more of a crisper line to it. Now, I'm only going to cure the ultimate finish for 30 seconds, so it's not fully cured. So when I add my next coat onto it, it's going to adhere really well. You know, a lot of people ask, um, you know, can you put a gel on top of a shiny surface? And with this, if it's only cured halfway, it's going to work really well and you're going to get still that good adhesion. Okay. All right. So our ultimate finish has set for a quick 30 seconds. Now, this is one thing that's not in our medium um, mystery box, but it is our new striping paint. So this is a gel paint. This is our black. We've got black and white. So I'm gonna use this one as kind of an accent around the top of my design. So just kind of coming around. Again, I don't necessarily need a straight line. So if you're somebody who has a little bit of a shaky hand, it's totally fine. If you have a little bit of too much coffee in the morning, that's fine too. So I'm actually kind of exaggerating the shake on this so that I can get a little bit more of that, kind of that dimension to it. I don't want that perfectly straight line. Okay, then I'm gonna come in with a little bit of our swipe, not a lot, just a tiny little bit, just enough to kind of dampen the tip of the brush. I'm gonna come in there and I'm gonna kind of blend out so that it gets just a little bit of a fade from that black into my glitter. By having that little bit of the swipe on there, it just helps to move that product a little bit more. But I'm kind of staying inside the black. I'm not going up onto the pink because I do want a little bit more of a crisp line around the edge. And I can even come back and detail that a little bit more with my striper once I have this set. Okay, so I think I'm liking how that's looking. We'll go ahead and freeze that again in for 30 seconds. I'm gonna come back in with just a little bit more of that liner and I'm gonna really take out quite a bit of that paint out of the brush. And then I'm just gonna come back through and just give myself a really thin line, again, just for that little bit of detail, a little bit more dimension. Okay, so just enough to give that outline. I just wanna blend that out just a tiny little bit more. So I'm just using barely the tip of my brush just to kind of blend that in. Okay, so that gave us just a little more dimension in there. I'm gonna go ahead and cure that and then we'll top coat. I'm gonna go ahead and do one more coat of our ultimate finish top coat to seal that design in. And I always feel like when you do your top coat, it really brings your design together and makes everything pop. And we will do a full 60 second cure on that one. All right, so hopefully by seeing some tricks um, to using the cream clays, you guys will 
try out the metallics, you'll try the glitters, and I think you're gonna love them. So have fun with your creep plays. And remember, you can only get these colors in the medium mystery box. Subscribe channel now. Subscribe channel now. Subscribe channel now. Subscribe channel now.